guys. Welcome back to the Book Haven with Rachel and Raven. We're so glad you're here. Grab something yummy to drink and let's get this episode started. Okay. Right. This is the episode that we're going to talk about who we are and how we met and why are we doing this podcast and who the heck is Raven? Because <laughs> nobody knows. <laughs> She's mysterious. Yes, mystery girl. Um, okay, Rachel, do you want to start us off like how we met? Well, so we've already talked a little bit about how we homeschool. And um, if for those that homeschool, you kind of start to realize the longer you're in it, the um, very small that community, like it's it's a very big community, I guess, depending on where you live, but yeah. you always end up knowing everybody in like somehow, um, you know, a friend of a friend or this yeah. person does this group or whatever. So uh, I, we met originally doing kind of like a Girl Scout thing. Um, and I had your daughter in my group and then, but we, I would say that we were like not friends. Um, we were definitely like acquaintances not at that point in our life. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> um, and then what's interesting, uh, and I love how all of it works out, but um, we ended up doing something together, a different homeschool co-op thing. Like we even went camping together. Do you remember that? No. Or okay. So were you I, at that I, trip? I swear I did not go to that camping trip, but you're not the only one that says that I was there. I am 100% sure you were I have there. another friend that swears that I was there. I have no memory of going to, I'm like pretty positive I did not go. I have heard this story from more than one friend <laughs> about how I was there. And I just like, I'm positive that we did not go. I'm it's really weird. Because <laughs> it's I really distinctly weird. Remember, you remember you guys, I think at the flagpole or something, like we were raising the flag. You don't no, remember any of I, no, I swear to you, I have no memory of this. It's really, really weird. We don't need to talk about how I have the memory of a goldfish, but, um, so then we were in a homeschool co-op group and I think, weren't we, like, we did a class together too. Yeah. Well, I think that was even our very, both of our first years and you did, if I'm not mistaken, you did a fir class the first year and I was your assistant. Yeah. So she was teaching about the planets and we learned this cute little song uh, it, i don't remember sure. that at all wow <laughs> and like the kids were making messes and you're like this isn't working <laughs> <laughs> that sounds right that's i'm not gonna yeah, argue yeah so yeah i was your assistant in that class and i was i was still very new to that co-op you were brand new too like it was our first yeah yeah so the real spark of friendship was <laughs> our group had decided that we were going to have pen pals. And um, oh, yeah. so we got paired together. And that's what, that's where the friendship happened, I feel like. I do remember that. I do remember. But that was like two years down the road when we did pen pals. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, we were, we were in this co-op together. And then it was like. <laughs> casually casually You're living life next to each other but not super committed I feel like the pen pal thing though really kind of made I know on my end really commit to um you know like pursuing you out more yeah and then um um the the funniest weirdest part I think of it is um uh, my family ended up moving to another state and um somehow <laughs> I don't even know how it actually happened but somehow we ended up talking more after I left yeah. um and using Marco Polo if you don't know what that is it's a fabulous app where you can basically video chat so yeah so we would just talk I was obviously very very lonely um when we first moved and didn't know a lot of people so I I used you as a lifeline I think to kind of stay um adulting with an with somebody else on on a regular basis yeah. um through technology so yeah. and then shortly after you guys moved you know 2020 happened and so 
we, you know, we kind of kept each other, I don't know, in the loop about what each other was reading. Um, that was also the year that we read our Bible through together. Yes. Um, so Which yeah. was a huge experience, too. If you ever want to get close to somebody, challenge yourself to read the Bible yeah. in a year together. It is an amazing experience, and it just, um, I know we had a lot of really deep um, life, you know, talks and discussions coming off of things that we were reading, um, and it holds you accountable, too. It does, yeah. That was a good year. I know it wasn't a good year, but it was a good year. (laughs) There were a lot of positives that came from that year. Yes, and speaking of 2020 and all of the fun stuff that came with all of that, like, we were cruising through some books, man. We were. Yeah. We were. Well, and then we ended up moving. Um, We actually moved the... The week that everything shut down, yeah, we we moved again, and um, it was oh so isolating. So yeah, huge, huge lifeline, um, and I think probably you know made us closer, faster, um, was just because I needed, I I don't know about you, but I needed it. <laughs> I needed your friendship. Oh for sure. So. Yeah. I think one of my favorite memories, which now it makes sense because you reminded me about the pen pal thing, but not that you wouldn't have normally done this, but um, so I remember like we were in co-op and I was, it was probably one of the worst days of my life. I was just really struggling just to keep it together. I was ready to get out the door and I just remember Rachel came over she was like, hey, how are you? Um, and I just remember saying, I'm fine, which was a big fat lie because I was not fine. I was anything but fine. And I remember turning around and being like, you know what? I just lied to you. I'm not fine. I'm not okay. But I will be okay or something like that. And I just remember she gave me the biggest hug. And if you know Rachel, she's not a hugger. <laughs> and so I like it meant so much to me because... In that moment, I felt seen, Um, even though she didn't know the, she didn't know the backstory or anything like that. And so I was like, okay, I could be her friend. (laughs) We could be friends. Yeah. See, I have no recollection of that. I know. I know. It's just just a flip on the map here. (laughs) (laughs) And then after that, like, Whilst when she moved, like when she would come back to visit, you know, we would do book clubs with our kids. We have had some really fun. We'll have to have to talk about have an episode about all the book club for sure book clubs that we've done. Um. Okay. So then I feel like the podcast idea came about because our kids listen to us chat all the time (laughs) about books and they think it's hysterical and so they're you know. I guess yours, yours in particular was like, you'll have to record these conversations. They're so funny. Yeah. So. And I will say too, we enjoy listening to people talk about books. I mean. Oh, yes. Like I don't listen to as many, but I love to talk books with people and find out what people are reading. And I'm one of those people that if I'm at the dentist and someone pulls out a book, I'm bending over to see if I can figure out what the name of the book is, you know, because I can't see the cover. So I'm like, oh yeah, you know, a weirdo. Well, I mean, I feel like if you take a book somewhere, you should just be ready to to discuss it, no? I agree. Yeah. Okay. I saw so. a woman in the skating rink the other day, and she was reading Educated by Tara Westover. Oh, and wow. And I seriously wanted to go have a conversation with her. <laughs> but I was with another friend, and so I was like, well, oh. that probably wouldn't be good etiquette. And then I was looking to see how far she was into it, and I was like, oh, oh, there's so much more to come. <laughs> Yeah. I think books are a great way to um, get to know someone quickly, too, yeah. because you really do. I don't mean to, but I totally, <laughs> in the back of my head, am, am analyzing your choices of books, the books that you choose to display in your house. like <laughs> Or on Goodreads. <laughs> or I mean. on Goodreads. <laughs> <laughs> but I just feel like... In a, And it doesn't, it's not in a bad way, but I think what you choose to read 
right and and how you choose to spend your time and what you rate them because yeah. sometimes I read a book and I'm like oh my word you know like that's embarrassing that it's on my goodreads but um but but it helps get to to know somebody and their their inner workings you know yeah I don't let my opinions of people's books dictate whether or not I'm their friend I just well, make a mental note of kidding. like well <laughs> <laughs> Here's yeah. the thing. Rachel and I don't always agree on books, and we have lively discussions about the books that we disagree on. Because a lot of times, yes. I will love a book, and when I say a lot of the times, I mean like a lot of the times. <laughs> See, I don't feel like it's that much, but I know you feel like it's a lot. Uh, I think it's maybe I don't it's know. maybe it's hurtful. Well, maybe no, maybe <laughs> I feel like it's more like the balance. It, the scales are not balanced, so the scale is oh. like you dislike more books. But yes, I yes, because I, go ahead and tell them that I like a lot of books that you yeah. recommend. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a good book recommender, so I don't know what that says about me. Although there there is a book that we will talk about at some point, and that you don't like. I have opinions. So. Yes. Not Which about the good. book, but about the author. Okay. <laughs> well, we Moving will, on. We will move on. Okay. So. Oh, well, before you get too far, okay. um, you need to tell everyone how you got your name because nobody, our personal friends who know us <laughs> had no idea that your, your first name is Raven because that's not what you go by in real life. So the way I got this name, Jackie, this is for you. And P.S. Jackie is uh, one of our other book book best friends who yes. um, is going to be on a future podcast episode. She will be. She will be. I am very excited about it too because it will be a fun time. Let me tell you guys. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, so I was born and my mother gave me the name Raven and my name was Raven Annette. And when I was about five, I was about kindergarten, I decided I did not like that name because kids called me a crow. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I just That's thought so that sad. was the worst insult. Who would call somebody like an ugly bird, crow, whatever. And so I informed my entire family and everyone around me that I hated that name and that I was to be called Annette. Except for my grandpa, he was allowed to call me Raven, and then he finally conformed to calling me Annette. But, yeah, so I basically changed my name, and everyone started calling me Annette. Or if you were my grandfather, he called me Annette. And then, um, yeah, it, it kind of made things confusing for people. Like, yeah. Because I would have to write the R, and then my signature, and because the... I don't know. It kind of made things confusing eventually um, as I got older. But <clears throat> my first name is Raven. I go in real life. I go by Annette. But for the podcast name, we were trying to come up with a name. And um, we had come up with a few different ones. Um, but um, it was Katie, right, that said, she said it needs to be something that rhymed. And then it just fell off of her tongue. What about the book Haven with Rachel and Raven? And there you go. It felt, it felt. It needed some alliteration. That's why we really had to do yeah. Rachel and Raven. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay, but you have to tell everyone what the definition is of Haven now that you've thrown it out there. Oh, that's true. Okay. It's a safe place and I, yeah, it's a safe place or a refuge. Um, <clears throat> and I just think. It's so nice to have a safe place, a refuge where you can discuss books, your opinions, your likes and your dislikes. And yeah. and we won't judge you too much. We don't. We don't judge you too much. But <laughs> it's in a loving way. It's in a loving way. <laughs> Listen, we want to we want to call people to a higher standard of reading. <laughs> That's what I cannot is. I cannot say that without <laughs> laughing because there are trash books that I read just <laughs> totally putting it not that is not true but like I rated R it. trash I, but <laughs> just some questionable things like what are you reading 
But we call it what it is, right? You know right. it's trash. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I should I should define the word trash as like not a mm, you're like not reading edi- like Harlequin like, right right I'm not reading novels. romance novels I just mean in the sense of like they're kind of off the wall out there weird yeah I can take a path of science fiction or fantasy sometimes that is a little eh, yeah. questionable <laughs> yes and I cannot. So there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do know that um, there are some books that I just don't even bother talking to you about because I know you're going to be not interested at all. So. My bookish question for this episode is, do you use real bookmarks or do you just use whatever you have laying around? And if so... If you just use whatever, what is the weirdest thing you've used? I am definitely of the mindset of like, I just grab whatever's handy. I I would say a lot of the time it ends up being like a nail file or (laughs) like something flat like that, a post-it note. Um, But just the other day, I couldn't find my AirPods. And I was looking and looking and looking and looking. And then it finally occurred to me that I had put them into the thousand page history book that I have to read um, for my son's homeschool year. And I put it in the middle of that to hold my place. Pretty and like we enough. tore the house apart trying to find them. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, I felt so <laughs> stupid. <laughs> okay. So this goes against a lot of, this is, this could be controversial. Okay. okay. I am a corner folder. <gasps> I know it's terrible. What? But like if I don't have, I've anything... never noticed that when I've borrowed a book from you though. Oh Yeah. And oh. all my kids, guess what? All my kids are corner <gasps> See, folders. I used to do that, but then I felt such shame from it that I don't <laughs> I don't fold the corners anymore. I, I used to feel shame about it, but I think my conscience is seared now because <laughs> I just, it just, that's just what I do. I don't know why. Like, I, I thought that you would be a purist. You've given me bookmarks and I, like, you hand them to me and I'm like, I'm never going to use that, but it's beautiful. <laughs> I know. I, I display them. Oh. So people will have to comment whether or not you fold corners yeah. in your books. Or do you use random objects or bookmarks? Yeah. I mean, I never realized that that was such like a hot topic. Oh, I'm trying to remember when that I discovered that. Because it's just been in the past, like, I don't know, five, ten years that I was like, oh, people don't, like, not everybody just folds a corner. Okay, and here's the other thing. I don't write in books like, like, um, yeah, I don't like to do that. Like novels or like fiction or anything like that. But I will write in like nonfiction books, like Bible study books and things like that, right? So then when I get a book and someone has gone through that book and written, because I buy (laughs) most of my books used. It is the most annoying thing to me. Like the corners being folded doesn't bother me, right? Yeah. But if you've got a sign of a used book, yeah. And you've like underlined every and in the book. Oh no. Is this a true story? This is a true story. I will find the book. I if I kept the book, I may not have kept it because it made me so mad. I don't I don't really like to even highlight. I like I just don't I don't really underline or highlight. I don't do anything to them. Even in like nonfiction books? Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. You are I a guess purist. I'm a weirdo. I just, when I'm reading a book, even when I've purchased it and it's my book, I just always think like, well, what if somebody wants to borrow this? I just, I, I cannot believe that you of all people, I really <laughs> thought that you were so pure to your books. <laughs> So now we're going to discuss, um, well, we thought that we would talk about um, our favorite book that we've read so far this year. So do you want to go first? All right. So my book that I was going to talk about is The Last Green Valley. And this book was recommended to me by Rachel. Um, Mm -hmm. And he also wrote another one, um, Beneath the Star beneath the scarlet sky 
Um, and it's historical fiction. This, okay, this particular book, The Last Green Valley, is so beautiful. It's a story that takes place in 1944. Um, I'll just read the little blurb. It says, A Stalin, push, uh, a Stalin forces push into Ukraine, young Emil and Adeline Martel must make a terrible decision. Do they wait for the Soviet bear's intrusion and risk being sent to Siberia? Or do they reluctantly follow the wolves, murderous Nazi officers who have pledged to protect pure blood Germans? Um, it, this book is so beautiful and so good. There are so many parts of it that I just um, fell in love with. I think sometimes people forget um, that people came from really hard circumstances just to be here in this country. And this is an example of a family that made it here to America with nothing and built their life and their legacy for their family from the ground up. And it was just beautiful. So you only learn about them being in America kind of like post-story. True. Just to clarify, yeah. yeah. So you're following them as they're fleeing um, to get away from the Russians. Yeah. Um, and some of it is just so unbelievable. I think when I was reading it, I kept telling you, like, I just, like, is this supposed to be based on a true story? Like, this just seems crazy um, because so much happens to them. So my pick for 2023 is Set the Stars Alight by Amanda Dykes and <laughs> let me let me set Can it up me before sign? you Can yes me let me it. set it up before you <laughs> bash it down okay so I really liked so okay let me start it with this she also wrote a book that is called whose waves these are and I totally would have put that but I read it last year um but that is like out of these two books that one is more my favorite but I read this one this year. So uh, if you're going to start with a Amanda Dykes book, I like that one. I know you didn't like that one either. No. But um, this one is really interesting. It has um, kind of like a history aspect to it that you don't really read about a lot, which is um, I would almost like put it in the category of pirates, but it's not like a pirate pirate. Um but in, it's like present day, this girl's looking for the wreckage of the ship. And then the the dual timeline is that you're following somebody who's on this ship um, in the past. And so it kind of goes back and forth between the two. And um, I just, I really like how she writes her characters. I know, or I feel like I know your problem is going to be that it's too, like, hallmarky. I just, I feel... I feel like I've only read one of her books, which was Whose Waves These Are. And the reason I didn't like it was was because it was too perfect of an ending. Like, everyone, yeah. you know, everyone, which is fine. I guess some, I guess for some books that's fine. I just, I was wishing for more at the end or something you different. You more conflict? I I don't know. It's just like For people to be like left miraculously <laughs> landed at the same spot, and it just oh, well. Was... We're not talking about this book. We're talking about the other book. Yeah, whose wave these okay. are? Because okay. I haven't read set the yeah. Anyways, set the I... stars alight. Yeah. yeah, but that's why I didn't like that, and I, I think it had something to do with her writing. I just I don't know. You should go. You should try to read set the stars alight because I feel like in that one too there's a lot of book references which I like yeah um if I'm remembering right like it's been I have on here that I read this in February so it's been a while but um I just I feel like sometimes I'm just in the mood for just a sweet little story that has enough um like this one had enough interest with the whole sunken ship aspect of it yeah but um, and following, like, um, I don't know what you call, I'm trying to remember, like, what that time period is called, but um, it says 200 years previous. So it doesn't give, like, the exact dates. But, you know, 
it's it's a while back and just kind of seeing how people that lived on you know ships would have you know done things um going from port to port and stuff like that so i just find different lives you know the way people live their lives very interesting but this one um this one is good if you're going to start though yes i would recommend whose waves these are and i do want to read more of hers she has quite a few that i have not read but um i really like it i think it's considered christian fiction if i'm not mistaken yeah but i don't remember i don't remember in set the stars alight there being a really heavy christian undertone i think there was in whose waves these are but um set the stars alight i don't feel like it was heavy with christian undertone it was just i would say it was more just kind of like a pg um aspect to it all right well we've come to the end of our time together and our hope is that you have been encouraged to read something new or to reread something old if you're like me mostly we hope that you you make time for reading in your life until next time